Hey folks, Paul Roberts here. This video fishing journal entry takes us into winter conditions as our core water temperatures have now fallen into the 40s. Once again, we're hitting our fall transition pond, uh, that shallow, heavily vegetated, dishpan contoured pond, which is not the type of water we tend to hear much about in terms of winter bass fishing. But it's enlightening because of the fact that it lacks classic winter bass habitat. If you do much research on the subject, you'll find that the general advice for winter bass fishing tends to be uh, fish deep, uh, fish steep gradients, uh, and fish hard bottom areas. But what if there is no deep water, no steep gradients, no hard bottom areas? A and to boot, the bottom is carpeted wall to wall with dense vegetation. What do we do? <laughs> Most people find another water to fish, and that's what I've always done. But if you're game, let's stretch our fall transition video series all the way out into early, early winter on just such a water type to see what it can tell us about bass behavior in winter. So this late November outing sees water temperatures now well down into the 40s, which generally means we've pushed into winter conditions. The general upshot being the surface can still heat, but for the most part, not much beyond skin deep. Shorelines may still attract fish, uh, at least in my experience so far, until they glaze over with ice. For further explanation of winter conditions and what they mean to the fish, see our previous winter fishing journals. Um, uh, just for your information, I see my video fishing journals as archives that can be referred back to every year, uh, like any good fishing journal. That's because things really do cycle around again every year. What's different are the water body types and the conditions and circumstances that each given fishing day uh, presents. Okay, today's outing sees 41 Fahrenheit in the morning at five feet. That's the maximum depth in this pond at, at this time of year's water level. Um, it's at base, base level uh, with a surface temperature just a degree higher at 42 Fahrenheit. This is dropping us dangerously close to peak density isothermia. Okay, what that means is um, the entire water column hits 40 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature at which water is at its greatest density as um, we've described in, in previous winter fishing journals. At this point, ice up is a single good cold front away. Today, however, is a decent heating day uh, for this time of year. The afternoon sees surface temperatures rise to 43 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit in certain places. Um, immediate shallows on incident banks uh, actually hit 48. There are still some fish at the shoreline, but, but few, owing to the lack of habitat um, that's depth and cover in this particular pond. Interestingly, twice I moved a bass from about eight inches of sun-warmed shoreline water, a, a bass that was using a small shoreline tree as his or her overhead cover object. To impress on you how uh, important shoreline trees can be, uh, and the bass's penchant for objects, this small tree offered no shade, okay, uh, due to sun angle. Its attraction appeared to be purely visual. It was an object to orient to. Now, to highlight the potential differences that exist in different water bodies, um, and, and the importance of those habitat factors we always discuss here, the neighboring pond, a bit more than a stone's throw away, um, and, and on the very same day, the this, this same day that we're gonna fish, had good numbers of bluegills, bass, and carp along its north shoreline. This neighboring pond's shoreline has great incidence exposure to the sun, convoluted structure, and complex cover, uh, as well as lower water quality due to its added fertility. Um, these were fish were readily apparent as you walked that north bank. Back on our fall transition pond, we arrived to find the water clarity is now super high, uh, greater than five feet. Um, if that carpet of weeds wasn't there, the whole place would be laid bare to prying eyes. This is a major seasonal change that many water bodies see over the course of the fall transition. I call it the, the winter clear water period, as that decaying organic soup that happened in late summer, early fall is finally devoured and 
uh, further water temperature drops curtail further composting activity. This generally holds until so -called, uh, the so-called spring turnover and the springtime plankton blooms come on. The water in uh, most winter, many if not most winter waters can be super clear. This will likely be our last trip to this year's fall transition pond. As a heads up, we'll be moving over to another pond for the remainder of our winter uh, video fishing journals. As winter conditions set in, I think it would be wise to move to a better situated pond um, in terms of habitat options for the bass um, and one with a larger population of bass. This should be interesting because the one I've chosen was also, uh, the upcoming one, um, was also our jungle warfare pond from this summer. So buckle up, we're going back in. <laughs> this time in, in 40 degree Fahrenheit water. Are you sure you want to come along? <laughs> We're doing this because I'm keeping on with our jungle warfare theme to see what we can find out about what goes on in such heavily vegetated, uh, uh, deeply covered waters in, uh, during winter. Okay, today's fishing. First, let's talk location. Where are late fall, early winter bass likely to be? In general, most bass head for the main basin, the main lake basin, or in our case, in this uh, flat dishpan body of water, to the main mass of water um, to, to winter over in. Within that main mass of water, major complex cover objects, drop-offs, walls, um, and, and the mouths of coves can, can attract bass. In late fall, early winter, some heating will still occur at the surface, which can actually draw fish up. There will also be uh, shoreline related bass um, down into the low 40s, especially on incident banks. But both become less important as the sun's heating ability weakens as the season progresses. Um, the bass end up dropping away from the surface and become bottom oriented. In, in my experience uh, so far, shoreline related fish activity will continue until the surface along those shorelines skim over with ice. Then we can expect bass to become bottom oriented. And this will become more pronounced as the winter progresses because the, the water's warmer down there. This is due to water being most dense, uh, once again at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, right around 40, a little below actually. And the ground itself beneath the water holds heat, making the bottom the warmest place in the pond. The bottom of my small waters in midwinter seems to consistently measure 40 degrees Fahrenheit, while the water starting just a foot or two above it uh, may be slightly cooler. Okay, for, for tackle this time of year, our winter tackle, tackle downsizing becomes important um, uh, into the finesse range. Medium power down through ultralight power. Uh, spinning rigs mostly for me in my waters. This is for several good reasons. High water clarity, higher water viscosity at cold temperatures, meaning that it'll, it will affect your line uh, uh, much more greatly than warmer water does. Cold water is thicker, it's more viscous. Um, and uh, we often need to use much smaller lures during, during winter. That's because bass target smaller prey in really cold water, especially where spiny rayed fishes like sunfishes are their primary forage. Uh, this is because smaller prey is easier to catch and especially to handle, that is to ingest and then to digest. Despite the remaining weeds that can still exist in these, these waters uh, during winter, hooked bass simply tire much more quickly in such cold water, so I can usually get away with light tackle. It's simply more difficult for those bass to bury into the cover. Still, such a dense carpet of coontail had me using eight pound monos for, for liters, that's um, 10 thousandths. Uh, for, you, for, for those of you uh, focused on diameter, which I am, um, and, and I did bring one rod with six pound, that's nine thousandths. In my uh, coverless ponds, though, that, that, that have no co cover to speak of, I often go to ultralight rigs with four pound liters. Um, that's eight thousandths um, during the winter. 
My main lines are fine braids at this time of year in the 8 to 15 pound, uh, that's 5 thousandths to 8 thousandths range, um, and uh, usually fluorocarbon leaders. Since the action tends to be close to the bottom, fluorocarbon helps keep the lure down there, um, not being pulled upwards quite as much with every tug of the line or turn of the reel handle, pulling that, buoying that lure up. The ability of fluorocarbon to sink um, uh, also creates less belly between the lure and the rod tip, um, adding a bit to detection sensitivity too. Okay, presentation. As the season progresses, the chuck and wind, that is horizontal presentations that tend to work so well in the warmer months um, and, and in certain fall conditions, uh, begin to falter until we find ourselves casting into what appears to be a, a dead sea. <laughs> uh, and it seems to happen surprisingly quickly, especially here in the north. In my neck of the woods and much of the country, the door seems to pretty much slam shut at around the 50 degree Fahrenheit mark. Interestingly, this jives with the research into temperature effects on bass metabolism. This does not mean there aren't circumstances when bass can be pretty aggressive feeders at or below such temperatures. Um, I, I've even videoed mature bass chasing small bluegills beneath the ice in 38 degree Fahrenheit water. So they can move. But remember, activity is energetically costly, especially during winter when energy conservation is prioritized. The wild card most often is the availability of vulnerable prey. But in many, if not most waters, especially natural waters with challenging prey, uh, prey species, uh, spiny raid prey like sunfishes, vulnerable prey is rare and or hard earned. Prey is not food until it's been caught. <laughs> so the vulnerable part of the equation looms large in a bass's life. Come winter, things simply get tougher for bass in most waters. Bass respond by decreasing activity. They're less capable performance-wise, yet they still must maintain body condition, so they remain willing feeders in winter. Uh, but the pace of uh, and the windows of opportunity for feeding uh, declines greatly. What does this mean for us anglers? For many, it means finding something else to do. <laughs> but there is good fishing to be had through the winter uh, in most bass waters if you're able to adjust your expectations of success. That may be the toughest part. If there's a saving grace that might make up for the numbers of fish brought to hand, um, each one can be stunningly beautiful. Um, I, I think uh, the most beautiful coloration and markings of the entire year, in fact. We actually begin to see this winter coloration coming on during our last fall outing in Video Fishing Journal 27, as water temperatures had fallen into the low 50s. Cold, clear water seems to be the key, and the water gets clearer and clearer as uh, winter comes on. So, what winter conditions mean for we anglers is uh, primarily that horizontal chuck and wind presentations and, and speed, uh, you know, relying on the fish to find us, to find our lure, can make for long days in the winter. To catch them, we have to, uh, as usual, let them know our offerings are worth pursuing. And in the winter, that means slowing down, uh, way down. Okay, that's the backdrop. Let's hit the water for our last trip to our fall transition pond for this year uh, and see what we find. That's a fish right there and a good one. Coming up, are ya? Right in that key spot. 
and I got six pound line. Let's try to keep her up. Hammer her. Nope, it's not a big one. <laughs> Just light tackle. Oh, we're gonna bury. Don't you bury on me. Oh, hiding under my boat. Here we are. Oh, you've got winter colors. Look at this. Watch this. Look at that golden yellow. Dark lateral stripe, uh, quite defined. Look at that beautiful fish. Oh my word. Wow. And there's that late fall winter belly. Yes. Oh, you're a beautiful thing. Okay. Mm. Hey, hey, hey. I've got a sharpened hook. There we go. You don't look like you've been caught before, honey. Just, uh, oops, just about 15 inches. Slow swim off, that's cold water. This is just a flat, those fish are exposed. There's that drop. And some milfoil in the shallows there. Is clean. Wow. Okay, you're right at the edge of your drop, so don't be careful. Don't stumble in on them. Cast up onto the flat, up to that milfoil, and swim on out. And I'm able to crawl it. There's a fish, and it's a good one. Well, <laughs> who knows? Right on the drop. Zippy little guy. It's not a big one, but hee All right, right on the drop, literally. Whoa. Oh, you can't go down there. Nope, nope, nope. All right. Oh, another beaut. Look at that. Those winter fish, they take on that. Look at that. Um relatively small mouth on this fish. That's an age thing too though, realize. You know, big old fish get big heads. See the dark, really dark um, coloration on them? They're really matching this coontail. They're just matching it beautifully with the light and dark pattern. Um, but I see that even in the other ponds where it's just dark bottom. See the oxygenated <laughs> gill arches inside that operculum? Oh yeah, oh yeah, that is a pretty fish. And I wouldn't mind opening you up, honey, but I'm not gonna. I know there's gonads in there. Where'd you go? Probably went underneath me. I don't see ya.